Some people, a song um, from Nigeria, and the song says, Jesus, may you reign, may you reign. Yesterday, you reigned. You reigned in my life. Today, come and reign, and reign forevermore. Hallelujah. Uh, so, at least, if we can't take your own language home, we'll be able to give you our own. Uh, this morning, too, I talked to another one. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. Jesus, may you reign. May you reign, Jesus, may you reign, may you reign, yesterday you reign, you reign in my life, today come and reign, and reign forever, yesterday you reign. Because of one person, 
Because once the prayer is answered for that one person, your own prayer will be answered. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Now, let's look at the word of God within five minutes. <coughs> Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. The Bible says, And on that night could not the, the king sleep. And he commanded to bring that books of the record of the chronicles of, and they were read before the king. Lord, open our eyes right now and bless us from your word. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Now listen carefully. I want to talk about Lord, let the book of remembrance be open because of me. Can you say to yourself? Lord, Lord let, let the book of remembrance be open because of me. This story is a serious, I mean, it's a common story that we all know, but I'd like to point out one or two things, and I want you to pray it with the whole of your power. I'd like you to know that God has not forgotten anyone. It does not matter the situation you have found yourself. God sent me to one person here. You are almost complaining, and you are saying to God, is there a reason to serve you at all? Because you feel that upon all that you have done, it looks like there is no way for you. God said, I should tell you, he has not forgotten you. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15. He says, can a woman forsake, forget this child of her suckling, that he will not have compassion? He said, they may forget, but ye, I will never forget you. Say to somebody beside you, God has not forgotten you. No, God has not forgotten say, you. Again, say, God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. Look at you. Say it again, say it again, prophet. Oh, and say, God, God has not forgotten you. This was a man who came out in chapter 2, and it is something very special for the king. And when you do something for the king, the king will always do something special for you. In, I mean, in, the, in the New Testament, the Bible said on the day of Herod's birthday, uh, one lady came out, the daughter of Herodia, and she began to dance. And the dance pleased the king. And the king said, you can dance for free. And he said, what do you think I can do for you? Ask me anything up to half of my kingdom. Now, that's somebody who is just dancing before a king. Now, this was Mordecai who saved the king. And he expected that they should thank him in return. Or at most give him a plot of land. Or sometimes, as it is usually done, the king should have offered him his daughter as a wife. Say, take my daughter, go and get married to him. But because he was a slave, because he was a foreigner, nobody remembered him. They didn't even, just like the case of that man in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. The Bible says he was a very poor wise man who saved the entire kingdom, but nobody remembered him. No, no, nobody remembered him. Even his voice was not heard. I don't know whether you are complaining and you are looking at yourself, how far you have gone with God, and it looks like nobody seems to care. I have a word for you today. The book of your remembrance shall be opened tonight. Yeah. I'm not speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking to one person. You are completely, you are wondering, Lord, have you forgotten me? I'd like to announce it again that your, the book of your remembrance is open tonight. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. God, every man may forget you. This man, and, and that was why sometimes uh, I was speaking somewhere humorously among pastors, and I said, you know, we talk about Mordecai not bowing down for Haman. You know, he's always boning his face. Maybe the reason why he was doing that was because he expected a return. He expected a compensation, and he didn't get it, so he felt that everybody is bad. So instead of, why would I bow down for this person? And he refused to do that. Well, that's subject to my own theology. You know, we have masters of uh, yes, okay. Old Testament here. Yes. But that's my own theology because if you expect that they should, you did something for your boss and you expected a thank you or a compensation or a cash reward and you didn't do it, you feel bad. Maybe that was why he was doing that, I don't know. Uh, but you know, he was just not happy about whatever was done in the, in the palace. But one day, one day, the day that the king was supposed to bless him was the day that the enemies were planning to kill him. The Bible says on that night, what happened on that night? It was a night where his destiny was going to be destroyed. It was a night that 
they, there was evil conspiracy against his life. It was a night that everything about his life and his generation was going to be decided. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. Every conspiracy against your life, God will scatter them by his fire. Yeah. It does not matter how strong those conspirators are. I declare one more time, God will scatter them by his yeah. fire. God may, you may think that God has forgotten you. Can I tell you, sir, he has not forgotten he has not forgotten who you are as his child. He has not forgotten what you have done for him. The Bible says God is not unrighteous that he will forget our labor of love. Right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 10. He is not unrighteous. Whatever it is that you have done, your donations, your hard work, everything that you have done, you may think that God has forgotten. He has not. God said, this is the season. We have the time of compensation will come to you. Amen. And when God wants to compensate you, he will compensate you handsomely. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Because if they, are going, if they were going to give um, Monica anything, at that time in, in, in chapter 2, it would have just been a plot of land. But he got what it was bigger than money. He got something that made him in charge. And if you remember, he and his uh, uh, and Esther, they ruled the entire kingdom till the end. I declare right now, the kind of compensation that will change your status, that will take you from the back position to the forefront, as you shout your loud amen, may God release it to you. Yeah. I thought your amen can be louder than that. Yeah. God is saying, I want to compensate my people. He wants to compensate you for your service. How much you have been serving him? You have been serving him. He said, he, you, maybe you have been saying, I've read the word of God that says in uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, that ye shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. And you are saying, I've been serving God and he has not blessed me. Let me tell you the truth. He has not called the seed of Jacob to save him in vain. You have not sought the Lord in vain. He is going to compensate you because the day of the book. The day the book of remembrance shall be open is right here. Amen. Say to somebody, say, I am not forgotten. I, am not forgotten. I, I thought you can say better. Say, I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God sees your secret givings. He sees all your labors in his house. He sees all that you have done to make the men of God happy. He sees all that you have done to, to move the kingdom forward. And he says, I should announce to you that right now, he wants to compensate you he can compensate you for your loss. And that day, when everything was concluded, the Bible says overnight they made a gallow and it was completed. The day that was meant for the death of a man became the day of his celebration and honor. I prophesy, I declare by the authority in the name of Jesus, every conspiracy against your life shall lift you forward in Jesus. Yeah! Whatever the enemies are planning, it will lift, lead to your liftings in the name of Jesus. Yeah. They may be in your family. They may be in your compound. They may be in your place of work. They may be even in the church. And they are saying, no, we won't allow you to. We will see how your dream will come to pass. Those who said to Joseph, how will you rule over us? They came to bow. I declare, your enemies will bow. Yeah. I say, your enemies will bow. Yeah. You will really shout it louder. Amen. Yeah. I said, God will remember you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Rise up on your feet as we pray. You want to say, Father, Father let the book of remembrance let the book of be open because of me. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, let the book of remembrance be open because of me. Let the book of remembrance be open because of my family. Let the book of remembrance. I have served you enough. I have served you so much, Lord. Let the book of remembrance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, I thought you prayed that prayer very well. If God didn't open that book that night, <laughs> within the next three hours, he would have been dead. The first three hours of the day, Mordecai would have been dead. Do you know why? The king is known to be a great drunk. He, and he's a drunker. He can drink anything, anything alcohol. He drinks a lot. If you remember very well, they were, and 
there was there was a three days of feast yes. of wine that Modeca, I mean that Esther called for. Yeah. And they had just finished the first day. They got home and he told him, he said, can you come back again and drink another one? So it was a season where they were drinking and, and I'm sure it was after my hangover. So Mordecai was a good strategist. He knew that I, if I present my check at this time, he will not even sign it. You know, he, the king also was forced to sign one when he was drunk. He, he said, they said, sign that we should kill all the, all the Jews. The king was not wise to know that his wife was a Jew. His wife also would have died because the law of Pasha is unchangeable. You understand what I'm saying? So they brought the check to him. They brought the proposal for him. And he signed without even reading it. So Mordecai knew that this plot is going to be a perfect one. This man is already drunk. Let me take it to him. But before he got there, the king of kings entered into the palace and took away the dream. I declare, those who should help you, they will not be able to rest. Until they rise up to help you. testimony that the day I sent for somebody to die became a day he was beautified. Say, Father, Father. every evil the enemies have planned for me, convert it to testimony, convert it to celebration. Go ahead and pray the name of Jesus. Convert it, Lord. In Jesus, mighty name of prayer. Now let's take that one prayer that I told you about. And that is, Lord, Lord. let my Joseph get out of the prison. Amen. What did I say? Let, let my Joseph get out of the prison. I will allow you to pray just three times. So let me explain it to you. Who is your Joseph? <coughs> your Joseph is the magnet of your good news mm. is the magnet of good things mm, you know what magnet does magnet what does it do it attracts it attracts it does draws things so you don't need to have any dream just have a joseph in your camp Amen. that joseph will attract all the good blessings to you Amen. do you understand what i'm saying Amen. nobody in the agenda of God, God didn't have any plan for any of the Egyptians. But the Bible says, a magnet entered into the house of Potiphar. And in Genesis chapter 39, the Bible says, and God blessed the, prospered the house of Potiphar because of the magnet that was there. Are you ready to pray this prayer? Yes. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Now, every time a Joseph is in your camp, because of him, you will be blessed. Yeah. I don't know whether I understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, for instance, look at Laban. Laban said, when, when, when Jacob said, I want to go. He said, please don't go. I have discovered that God is blessing me. You are a magnet that is supposed to bless me. <laughs> so, I don't have a blessing, but you, in my camp, you are attracting blessing to me. It is, And you know, the blessing was not working for Jacob. It was working for Laban. You understand what I'm saying? If you have that kind of those kind of people in your business, you don't be wondering how contracts are coming from all over the world. And you're wondering how I didn't do anything for you. It's not you. It is a Joseph that is in your camp. But how will it now be? The Joseph that is supposed to be blessing your life, attracting blessing in your life, the enemy has imprisoned him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say, Father! All my Josephs that the enemy has in prison deliver them because of me. Open your mouth and pray.
Now he said to them, uh, the Bible says, the Bible says, he sent a man before them, Psalm 105, I think that's 17 or so. He said, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, whom they bound. Mm. And that's why he himself, Joseph said to them, he said, God has sent me ahead of you to prepare you a posterity. Can you imagine that when they got to Egypt, Joseph was not there. If Joseph were to be in prison, at the time they came to look for food, mm. do you think they would have gotten food? No, disastrous. <laughs> because they would just tell them, I'm sorry, we can't sell to you. We need we need also because it was seven years of famine. So they would want to keep as many. But because God has sent him into the palace, he has authority to give anything. <laughs> are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Let me tell you the truth. Let me come to a practical time now. Do you know, sir, there are people you are thinking they should help you. They also have problems. Mm. 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 Yes. There are people God has assigned to help you. The devil is afflicting them right now. Amen. There are people who have brothers overseas. They have problems right now. And you are crying to them. Send me money. They can't send. The reason is because they have problems. If they are going to help you and lift you up, God must go and do something about it. There are parents who are suffering right now because the children who should have helped them, they are still in problem. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I, I, I think you don't understand. A benefactor that is waiting for you at the junction of need, he will just tell you, don't worry, don't worry. You know God can place somebody in a company that you are going to present your proposal. And before you get there, when you just get there, you just say, don't worry, I, I think I've seen you before. Don't worry, I, I, I trust this man. They say, are you sure? He said, I trust him, I trust him. I know him very well. And you just approve it without checking it. Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. Uh, so, um, I, think, I think men understand this prayer more than ladies. Uh, women, what is happening? Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. Oh my benefactors. Oh my benefactors. That, that the enemy has in prison. Yeah, yeah. In, in problems, Lord, I pray them because of me. Open your mouth and pray. Likado soto lebahaya, yango raba seka taraba. Lord, I pray them right now. Set them free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Thank you for the last time. I'd like you to pray for somebody. You want to pray for him. I'm sorry that if you feel that I'm not praying for you, but I think I'm praying for you. You understand what I'm saying? Because most of us would have been out of where we are. That man in John chapter 5 and verse 5 said, Master, I've been here for 38 years. Why? Because I don't have one man. If he had gotten one man, just like the man in Luke chapter 5, there was another man in this, with the same sickness. But four of his friends carried him. Mm. And they said, we will not leave you here.